Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. Let's talk about the new moon in Pisces, which is coming up in a couple of days' time. There's quite a few things to say about that, some things that are not necessarily um, so obvious because there's some really beautiful um, energies going on with this new moon, and equally so there are some extremely challenging energies which I'll explain uh, as I bring up the chart and walk through some of the themes that I see. Before I do that, I just want to, without going into the politics and, you know, any of that stuff, I just want to say that I send so much love um, and hopefully, you know, um, resolution sooner rather than later. For anyone who's experiencing, you know, some really difficult times at the moment and, you know, particularly in Eastern Europe where we know what's going on, I don't really want to go into all of that. There's, a, you know, a lot of astrologers are looking at the chart for when the, you know, direction was given and this and that and the other. I don't really want to go into that today. I'm just, I've found the last few days to be quite exhausting, just, um, just, probably just worrying about it so much, worrying worrying for the people that are there. So I just want to extend um, some love and, and peace and, um, yeah, some good energy to those people that are really facing, you know, really extraordinary times. And that means people in Russia as well, not just in Ukraine, because there are a lot of people getting slammed in Russia that are just caught up in this, you know, with no choice of their own. So. It's just important to remember that you know there's there's a lot of people being affected by this so i just want to extend those wishes to all those people um i just want to also point out a couple of things without going into extensive analysis at this point and i perhaps i'll come back and do further on this but i just wanted to note that i did observe with regards to Ukraine's leader, um, Volod Volodymyr, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, um, his chart and Ukraine's national chart as well. There's just two very interesting things going on there. Ukraine's chart, first of all, the sun for Ukraine's chart, the position of the sun that is, is um, one degree of Aquarius, okay? Now that's very, very significant and not a coincidence. And basically, long story short, what that does is transiting Pluto at the moment, which is at 27 degrees of Capricorn, has already begun its uh, impact of the conjunction that it will form to the sun in Aquarius of Ukraine's national chart. There's what I'm seeing over and over and over again is with regards to orbs and transiting Pluto, there's something really powerful that happens when Pluto is just three degrees away from making its exact applying conjunction. I've seen this over and over again in people's charts, in places charts, etc. So, and this is just another example of the power of that, right? I mean, I, you know, you could go even further and say, look, even when it's four degrees away, there's still something going on there. Certainly there is. But the three degree seems to be a bit of a magic mark. There seems to be a lot of things that come together in so many examples that I've looked at. So I just wanted to point that out without, you know, analysing Ukraine's chart and so forth. Just just that alone is, you know, it's it's absolutely outstanding relative to the circumstances that are playing out there again i don't want to go into the politics i know it's a distraction i know there's there's this perception on it there's this perception there's this theory there's that theory and i appreciate the different perspectives and theories that people have but i don't really want to go into that um more than anything i just want to send waves and waves and waves of love right to the people who really need it um going back to the astrology though with regards to uh, Vol Volodymyr, the leader of Ukraine, who's so young, I can't believe just it's really unusual to have somebody so young, you know, have that level of um, power, if you want to call it that, or responsibility and duty, right? It's just incredible. I mean, he was born in, um, what is it? Uh, no, that's 
Putin. Sorry, just going back to the other guy. Um, 1978, you know, I mean, he's what, 40 years old, something like that. You know, that's just so young. It's incredible. Anyway, in his own chart, and perhaps I'll just um, bring that one up because I do have that chart here. So here is his chart. Now, this is, again, another example of Pluto being three degrees away, although in this case it's it's moved on. Um, and uh, pardon me, no, it hasn't. Um, it's okay. So let me just start that again. Transiting Pluto at the moment for this guy here is basically already opposite his Mars. Okay. So um, just to show you, for instance, okay. So this is uh, the inner wheel is his chart. The outer wheel is the transits. Okay, for the moment. So look at Pluto, twenty-seven. 45, almost 28, so it's already opposite his Mars. So here we have a, a Mars-Pluto combination, which is, you know, power, power struggles, willpower, war, conflict, etc. Okay, so that's, you know, that's really, um, given the status and position that he holds, this is an incredibly significant transit. This is, you know, this speaks to every action that he takes and you know how he can actually fight and defend and protect for his people right so it's i mean you know that's in short so there's you know that's just another example because it's actually three degrees there's that magic three number again um away from being exactly opposite his mars okay so there's two examples you've got um the ukraine national chart where the sun is i think zero or one degree i'd have to check that again but it's either zero or one okay of aquarius so pluto's already opposite it um rather conjunct it and in the latest chart of ukraine pluto is already opposite the mars okay that's really powerful stuff really powerful perhaps i'll come back and talk more about that there's been some requests for um <clears throat> the chart of uh what's his name Schwab, Klaus Schwab, who seems to be quite a significant character in the storyline of lots of things that are going on. And I haven't had time to look at his chart, but uh, I will do that in the very near future. So for those of you that ask, um, just be patient with me. I'll come back and talk about him. <clears throat> so this is the new moon chart. Uh, which takes place on the second or third, depending on your location on the earth. So this is drawn up for Melbourne, Australia. And in Melbourne, it takes place on the 3rd of March. Now, when you just glance at this initially, it's it's really quite beautiful because you, you see the sun, the moon, Jupiter, Neptune, all in Pisces. Um, oh, I don't think I'm sharing my screen. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> things get a little bit tricky <laughs> when you've got two screens going on um just needed to make sure that i was sharing my screen okay so there's the sun moon conjunction in pisces at 12 degrees so the sabian symbol is the 13th degree which i will read to you because it's quite uncanny actually we have jupiter in pisces very close to the new moon and neptune is trailing uh not too far away, in my opinion, that's also a conjunction to the new moon. What's more important, really, is that both Jupiter and Neptune are the rulers to Pisces. Jupiter is a traditional ruler, and Neptune is uh, considered the modern ruler in um, Western astrology, as it were. Uh, it's the, the planet that corresponds to transcendence it's, it's a transpersonal energy transpersonal planet but to have both of them there aligned because they're you know getting close to form their conjunction which happens around the 19th of april with venus which i'll come back to talk about that but anyway we can see them you know starting to kind of get closer and closer together so we have these incredible energies you know um with this new moon both these planets rule the new moon um <clears throat> We have a really nice sextile from Uranus. That's not a harmful energy, particularly because it's a sextile. So sextiles are usually opportunity. Um, 
And what's the opportunity speaking to? It's speaking to some process of a new cycle that we are stepping into relative to this new moon that really assists us in further integrating um, more authentic components of who we are becoming, you know, in our journey, our growth, our development, where we are at the moment. So Uranus is assisting the new moon in that way because it's forming a sextile. So that's good. We don't need to worry about that. That's a really uh, great energy, actually. Um, what is happening, though, with this new moon is that this conjunction with Mars and Pluto, which is incredibly powerful and incredibly evident in the mundane world, the external world with what's going on, over there on the eastern side of Europe. Um, and down here is Eris. So let me just clear those lines to kind of capture this a little bit better. So there's Mars, Pluto, there's Eris. Okay. So the midpoint, this is why it's always really good to look at midpoints because you just get a, a, a more, um, a deeper sort of look into the energies of the new moon. So the new moon is right at the midpoint of this Mars Pluto conjunction to Ceres. So the distance between Mars Pluto and Ceres is actually about 12 degrees of Pisces. So that new moon is caught in a sandwich with Eris, goddess of chaos and destruction, Mars Pluto, will power violence, death, war, whatever you want to call it, can be any of those things. Of course, at a more spiritual, um, transcendent level, level of consciousness and awareness, then we're talking about the will forces of our ego personality, Mars, the actions that we take are uh, aligning with Pluto from the level of a, finding a, a greater balance if you like or integration point with our own will forces and how we are directing our will our anger our fight our defense mechanisms our energy our passion our desires you know all those things so that's at a more conscious level let's say but in terms of a collective energy from this new moon cycle whilst it has this gorgeous Neptune Jupiter frequency it is caught in between Mars Pluto and Eris and we can't ignore that that's a very very powerful statement that's been made by this new moon so you know I mean the the Pisces energy is certainly an invitation for all of us to find more compassion greater sensitivity and perhaps, you know, having to make some sacrifices as well, you know, um, for people who, who really need support and help and care, you know, just reaching out and extending, you know, a bit of a helping hand, showing that, that sensitivity and care, understanding that we are all brothers and sisters the layers and layers and layers and layers from the personality level that can create division from point of view of right, wrong, good, bad, evil, light, this is right, this is wrong, you know, politics, um, cultural norms, values, etc. When we're kind of dancing around in that sphere, we, we really do lose sight of the fact that we are all one human family and we are all brothers and sisters and we all come from the same place and we all return to the same place and when we return we don't take any of this stuff with us what we take with us is our conscious soul psyche memories and the love that we have been able to give and the acts that we have performed you know because the soul decides its next uh, incarnation and the evolutionary things that it wants to learn based on everything that it learned in the current incarnation, let's say, for instance. So, you know, we have all those bigger levels, of course, but 
going zooming right back into the moment we have this new moon that is an invitation to a portal of energy that helps us connect with our faith as well i believe having a greater sense of faith in a new vision of the reality being born ever so quickly before our eyes which you know is caught in this pocket at the moment which appears quite cataclysmic without question but again it's a, it's about remembering that we do have a say in what's unfolding and what will be in the future because every single thought and act is not forgotten <clears throat> and is recorded so <clears throat> even if we seem or feel totally helpless in certain situations i know i felt that a couple of days ago when i was thinking about what was happening to people over there in eastern europe i felt quite um <clears throat> just really overwhelmed by feeling helpless like feeling like i really want to do something to help people <clears throat> And I just didn't know what to do, you know, from the point of view of being where I am, which is on the other side of the planet. So <clears throat> what I did was just meditate and just send, um, <clears throat> just send love from my heart. That's all I can do from where I am. And that's not a small thing because if we can all do that, it, it does have an impact, you know, it does it's got a greater impact than what we realize. I spoke about this when I talked about the sun's ingress into Pisces, you know, the previous video, I think, or second last video that I did. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to sort of go into that too much. But I guess um, I, I am a little bit concerned when I when I look at this chart and I see that the new moon is sandwiched in between Eris, Mars and Pluto, because those energies, you they can't be suppressed. You know, they 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 need an out an outlet so they they will be um projected as it were right and so from from the position where we stand in terms of the new moon we we need to align with soul spirit divine um divine learning seeing hearing feeling trusting um injecting that into our own dreams um injecting that into the earth plane the world the human family so this is an invitation for all of us to unite because pisces neptune energy which is what this is the, the new moon encapsulates that field is about oneness and and unity you know the one there is no separation I, that's really kind of weird to capture from our left linear mind but that's the essence of pisces and neptune it's it's oneness and so by tuning into this energy and seeing perhaps seeing that we are that there, there is this oneness there, there is this at, at the core and essence of everything that vibrates everything that manifests everything that we see believe etc um underneath all of that there is just this unison field of love and unison and so this is just a portal for, for extending that invitation to us to feel it embody it work with it because this is a new moon so it's a new moon cycle so it's the beginning of a lunation cycle and so it will unfold over the course of four weeks right till we have the the next new moon and of course we'll have the midpoint which will be the full moon in a couple of weeks time but certainly you know the intentions that we set right now can be um very very powerful especially for what's going on at the moment we've, we've we've had to i think we've had to really do this so much you know over the last two years really with everything that we've been challenged with and faced and and now it's you know sort of ramped up again to another level because um 
there's another apparent threat, except this one I think is just a lot more, um, a lot more real. <laughs> as weird as that sounds and given you know new moon in pisces it's like well, what's real you know what's really real about any of this <laughs> i always have question marks you know about things that are presented on you know in the matrix on that external level um the scorpio component of who i am seems to question everything actually so anyway look this can be a, a really uh beautiful energy helping us actually step into the vibration of Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, which all come together on the 19th of April. This can be the birthing, if you like, of um, a lot of the intentions and practices, um, inspirations and dreams and connections and art and beauty and love and music, you know, all those things, any of Anything that um, has a level of inspiration and through that inspiration, your creativity is, you know, born or expressed or extended or further developed, you know, whatever it may be. This is just a, a beginning point, if you like, from the point of view of the sun moon cycle. So it does hold a lot of promise because its rulers are in their own sign. You know, this is when we look at a planet and we are trying to understand how this energy can potentially speak to us or manifest, we always need to look at its condition. That is, you know, its sign placement, its house placement, etc. Right. And so we can apply that same thought process to a new moon. What's the ruler of the new moon? Jupiter and Neptune. Where are they? They're in Pisces. And where are they in relation to the new moon? They're right next to the new moon. So there's a, a really powerful uh, brand new portal and energy opening from this. Because it's a new moon and because it is forming a conjunction to these planets and it is an applying conjunction because Jupiter and Neptune are further away, so the sun and moon have to catch up to Jupiter and Neptune. So that's called an applying conjunction. Um, so in other words, new phase conjunction. The weird thing is that I, I always remember this when I look at um, something like this, uh, a Pisces new moon. It's a new moon energy, but yet it's, it's the Pisces archetype and the Pisces archetype is the, um, it's the energy of closure, completion, finishing, endings, um, resting, withdrawing, retreating, letting things come to a natural kind of close, as it were. It's the balsamic phase in terms of the lunation phases. The Pisces phase is the balsamic phase. And the balsamic phase has this quality to it where um, <clears throat> we can feel a bit lost, a bit um, uncertain with our general sense of what's going on and what we are feeling, what we are experiencing, and perhaps even um, finding it a little bit challenging to to place it, you know, to to find the words to um, describe what we're actually experiencing, because that's a real Pisces flavor, right? That's the balsamic phase. It has this quality about it where. The balsamic phase is the darker sort of phase of the moon, just as it's getting ready to go into um, the, the black moon, which is the new moon, right? So it has this quality of things kind of um, just closing off and finishing and completing. And there's this kind of sense from the soul, if you like, where it knows it has to um, finish certain things right now it's it's time to fit it could just be one thing for you it could be one thing for for me for whomever just depends what's going on in the bigger picture of you your chart and your life so it is a new moon it is a new beginning it does have the conjunction to jupiter and neptune which holds tremendous promise the one thing about jupiter that we kind of need to remember though is that jupiter can blow things out of proportion and it has a tendency to exaggerate right that's the more um 
I don't know if you want to call it shadow side or personality side, you know, of Jupiter. But Jupiter does have that about it. The planet of Jupiter, the signature, the archetype of Jupiter. It is in rulership, so it holds tremendous dignity here, right? As does Neptune for that matter. But I just want to say that, you know, it's probably good to just kind of make a mental note of that. Just remember that things can be so blown out of proportion and, ex and exaggerated with Jupiter's presence there. Of course, at a more transcendent, spiritual, cosmological level, if you like, there's tremendous growth, uh, spiritual learning, um, absorbing things from spirit, you know, Jupiter in Pisces, that coming through. Sorry, there's this terrible noise by a worker outside. I'm hoping that you can't hear it. I can, and it's quite annoying. Um, <clears throat> so I think we need to make the most of this energy by sending out the intention of unison compassion, um, possibly even forgiveness where it's needed. The other things that I want to point to, and then I will go, I didn't want to make this a super long video. Um, this is really quite extraordinary. <clears throat> the Mars-Venus conjunction that you see here at 26 and 27 degrees of Capricorn. So I've spoken about this fairly extensively, you know, over the last couple of months and uh, just had a look a little bit further into things because what's happening is Venus and Mars will form a conjunction, right, in Capricorn. And what happens at this time is that Venus is coming out of her shadow, right? So she's, she's retracted her steps She's coming back to forming her um, final conjunction to Pluto, right? And so she's had a, a triple, I was going to say bypass. <laughs> she's had a triple, you know, conjunction. It'll be a triple conjunction uh, since she first ingressed into Capricorn because she, you know, went retrograde. She became the morning star in Capricorn, et cetera, et cetera. I've spoken about that extensively. But so her coming out of shadow at this time during the new moon i think is pretty important as well because once we move through the shadow it it implies that whatever venus enabled us to understand um release purge transform embody um during her retrograde period now that she's moving out of her shadow, which means she'll actually start picking up speed and she'll get back to her regular speed, because at this stage, Mars is actually moving faster than her, which is not the way it normally is. She's still uh, moving slower than Mars because she went through her retrograde cycle. That's what happens to planets. And then they eventually, when they come out of their shadow, particularly, they really start to pick up momentum and get back to their regular speed. So she's coming out of shadow, which basically means in, in you know, simple terms, the, the learning and growth that took place during her retrograde cycle is really now um, taking us into a direction where we can further realistically and practically really uh, integrate what we've learnt with the Venus Capricorn Morning Star, which is the Venus retrograde cycle. So that's quite significant because this happens during the new moon, right? And that's, I think that's a really lovely uh, synchronicity there that we have this new moon you know, Jupiter and Neptune rule this new moon. It's filled with tremendous um, potential, I think, from the level of connection with spirit and, and how we can um, create a sense of unison with each other. And then we have Venus coming out of shadow, uh, bringing to our, you know, our everyday conscious field mind um of really seeing very very clearly what that journey has meant for us and how we are now really able to integrate the things that we have learned 
The other thing that I want to address here that's super important is that um, I'll just show you what this looks like. This is really important. So have a look at this chart here. This is uh, the 6th of March, so it'll be 5th of March if you are in a different part of the world. Have a look at Mars and Venus, um, the degrees and minutes. Can you see that they're both at the exact same degree in minute? And that is literally to the end of Capricorn, right? So they are both at, um, uh, sorry, wrong one, uh, meant to be Mars. So disregard Pluto, that line there. So both uh, Venus and Mars are at 29 degrees and 59 minutes. So they've got one minute left before they move into Aquarius, right? Now, if, if you don't do kind of a little bit of technical work, you'll miss this altogether, and this is why I'm mentioning it. The way Solar Fire and perhaps other, I'd say most other programs do this as well, when you draw the chart and you can see the chart on the screen, you can see the, the, num the, the symbol, the numbers, the zodiac sign, and then the two digits on the outside are the minutes in astrological time. So if you were to cast this chart, you could very easily be fooled in thinking that hmm, Venus and Mars are exactly conjunct. Look at them. They're right at the end of Capricorn. They're both at 29.59. They've only got one minute to go before they get into Aquarius. And so the error there would be to assume that the cycle, the new uh, synodic cycle of Mars Venus begins at Capricorn, when in fact it doesn't. It actually begins in Aquarius. And the reason I know this is because when you go a little bit deeper, I'll just show you. So if you're working with Solify, this is what you do. You'd go to reports. You'd, as soon as you click reports, this is the first window that comes up. Okay. And you want this particular tab open where it says chart analysis now on the left hand side you've got points uh next column is uh long uh, longitude and then you've got these other columns here don't worry about those so much that's actually showing you the speed of travel is the speed of how fast or slow a planet is moving etc we don't need to worry about the rest of those columns for today i just want you to pay attention here have a look at mars okay and have a look at what it says in the column. It says 29 Capricorn, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. So going back to the chart, you can see what's not shown here is the seconds. Okay. You can't just rely on the degrees and the minutes. There are seconds happening as well. They're just not shown in the chart. And so that's the astrologer's job to kind of go a little bit further. So bringing this back, as I said, Mars is 29, 59, 59. Now look at Venus. It's 29, 59, 44. That is an extremely close conjunction. It doesn't get much closer. It can get a little bit closer, but it doesn't get much closer than that. Um, so what actually happens is Mars goes into Aquarius before Venus. And so they haven't formed what's called a partile conjunction, meaning an exact conjunction, although it appears they have. The reason that's important is because that's telling us that something huge is ending with the whole Mars-Venus cycles, which these cycles go back to years and years and years and years and years, which I'll come back and do a separate video on. Um, so there's a whole new, you know, synodic cycle beginning with the conjunction that Mars and Venus will make in the sign of Aquarius, okay, which is basically in a few hours' time after this chart here or the following day. And so Mars Venus ending something quite significant in the archetype of Capricorn, which is a very karmic sign because it's ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the lord of karma. It's the lord of, you know, karma from the point of view of meeting um, the deeds that we must meet. The things that we must attend to the lessons that we have to learn the things that 
may be separated from us because Saturn corresponds to separation or severing. So there's something really quite meaningful taking place with this uh, Mars Venus conjunction, which is not an exact conjunction, but rather it's more of a, a balsamic energy conjunction because it doesn't get to the new phase it, it only gets to the new phase when they both reach the sign of Aquarius so this is showing us that there's something really quite profound complete, completing here from an evolutionary level from a soul level that has to do with clearing out karma now on a personal level this will be speaking to our own experience of personal relationships our own values and morals you could say and the the actions that we have taken or have to take around that and how how we are integrating that mars venus energy so that they um because they are fused together by being in a conjunction but we need to find a way to kind of balance them out as well that's i mean venus is all about balance right so there's something quite deep and important finishing here and this happens um you know just basically well first of all venus comes out of shadow during the new moon then we have you know venus and mars dancing together just a couple of days they they are already in a conjunction during the new moon but this is the closest they get before mars first leaves capricorn goes into aquarius and venus is still in capricorn when that happens that's how we know that the synodic cycle actually begins when they are both at zero aquarius and further to that First of all, it's a new synodic cycle that begins with Mars Venus in the sign Aquarius. So it's a new phase conjunction and it's zero degrees. So there's there's so many levels to this that speak to brand new energy and cycles being born, all things to do with Mars and Venus, which are very important planets because they speak so much to virtually everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis when you get up out of bed and you take action towards something that's mars that fuel in the tank that energy that drive the you know all all mars things well we, we deal with mars every day more or less in some kind of way and we deal with venus as well because we have time out we have time with our loved ones you know we eat we we drink we enjoy you know that's all venus so venus and mars speak to very very basic things from that very basic mundane every day-to-day -day level and then of course when we want to go into the deeper psychological and spiritual implications we're talking about much deeper components of our self-worth self-love value venus and mars our willpower our will and aligning that from a higher level, which would be Pluto, aligning the lower will with the higher will. Lower is not meant to sound um, degrading or as a put down. It's just a way of distinguishing between the personality willpower and the soul willpower, right? And that alignment. And this is all happening all over Pluto. <laughs> So, you know, an undeniable things going on here and that conjunction in um, Aquarius, which I'll, I'd love to come back and speak about separately, which happens the following day, hopefully I'll get time to do that, is, you know, it's in the sign of Aquarius, which is what humanity. We've, we're really fi finishing some old karma with this Capricorn energy and we are stepping into a sign that corresponds to humanity. So the other thing is further to all of that is that the great conjunction that occurred at the end of 2020 between Saturn and Jupiter was at zero degrees of Aquarius. So this new synodic cycle or, or new phase conjunction between Venus Mars at zero Aquarius is at the same point where the great conjunction was as well. Now that's not a coincidence either. So lots going on uh, on much deeper uh deeper levels that speak to the future really you know the future it's it's all happening in aquarius aquarius is a futuristic sign so quite a few points to consider there i'll leave that with you and uh i'd love to hear your thoughts and comments and and yeah just how you are all doing i hope that um all of you are 
are doing well and um yeah it's uh very testing times you know a couple of days ago i i you know the energy of all this i could feel very strongly but not only very strongly it was over the weekend there was this sense of um uh it was a very deep um a very deep process that i went through and my mood was really low actually and that was i think while the moon was in um yeah the moon was in capricorn as well that didn't help (laughs) the moon is your moods and so every time the moon goes into capricorn it goes into my 12th house and um this venus mars pluto energy is all over my mars so um this is a i'm mentioning this or i don't like talking about myself and my chart but i sometimes like to bring in a couple of points just as a way of example so relative to everything i said really consider you know where this mars venus conjunction is playing out and therefore where pluto is as well because that's going to give you such a big clue to what you are clearing out and what you are working with with this uh mars venus pluto conjunction and then the actual true conjunction in Aquarius, which happens just you know a couple of days after the new moon, right? And also that for that matter, where is 12 degrees of Pisces in your chart? And I've just remembered the Sabian symbol for 12 of Pisces, which is the 13th degree of Pisces that we go to. And I'm, I'm not going to analyze it, but I'm going to read it to you. And for those of you that work with Sabian symbols, this will be valuable and you perhaps have this book as well and you can go back and read it so where is it so my book's fallen apart but that's the book that i use for sabian symbols um just in case you're not watching and you were listening dane ruddy on astrological mandela the cycle of transformations and its 360 symbolic phases that's the sabian symbol book that i use um So the 13th degree of Pisces, which is where we need to go because the new moon is at 12 degrees. Listen to the heading. An ancient sword used in many battles is displayed in a museum. The keynote through the effectual use of his will, a a consecrated man can become a symbol of courage for all those who follow in his footsteps. Now, I'm thinking, yeah, there's, there's a few different ways we can think about that. Relative to the new moon, relative to Putin and relative to um, Vladimir. So have a think about that. Tell me what your thoughts are. I I kind of have my own sense about that. Um, Again, though, you know, just when we think about that Sabian symbol and when you think about the fact that this new moon is sandwiched between Mars, Pluto, Eris, Mars, Pluto, Eris, think about that. Think about that energy. That's, it's pretty hostile energy in the mundane world, okay? It's not lightweight. It's, it's hostile and chaotic. That's what concerns me. But um, ultimately, though, Pluto is always about transformation, the necessary transformation that we either agree with, don't agree with, like or don't like. doesn't matter. Pluto is going to do his thing. He always does. So anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks for listening and um, take care of yourselves and um, yeah, see you soon. Bye.